And by now, I guess you should be able to guess, racism has two historical sources. One is slavery. Um, when you enslave a people and you take them and use them in this way, you justify it by saying they're treacherous, they're stupid, they're morally inferior, they're this, they're that, and the other thing. And the other is imperialism, as I've just gone through and explained. When you go in and you plunder their land and such. The imperialists, by the way, were not innate racists. I mean, racism wasn't their, the first item on their agenda. In fact, they didn't even care what race you were. The first, the first acts of imperialism in the modern era, I mean, putting aside ancient Greece, ancient Rome, were, was Western Europe against Eastern Europe. And the Eastern Europeans were Europeans, they were Caucasians. England's oldest, or, or Great Britain's oldest colony was Ireland. You can't get any whiter than the Irish. I mean, they're white, they're pink-faced, and, and, uh, and they're Caucasian. Um, so when they went into Africa, it, it wasn't, let's go in and be mean to these black people. They didn't care. They didn't care who was on the land. They wanted what was in the land. They didn't care about the color line. They were interested in the bottom line. But in short order, after you go in and you massacre the people, you burn their homes, you destroy their mines, you destroy their kilns and their little production systems, and you, um, you rape their women and, and, uh, and, and starve them and whatever, in India and Africa and Asia, North America and such, you have to justify that. So you start talking about them as animals and beasts and uh, not civilized, not someone you'd want to turn your back to and uh, horrible, the, the only good engine is a dead engine. You remember, that was an expression in, the, in America for more than a century. Um, and, so, and so that's where racism comes in handy. And then, of course, it develops a momentum of its own.